morning, everybody, and welcome to Erna Berry's Tuesday Morning Market Roundup. Today is January the 24th, and we hope you're all having a great day so far. Our crew is a little bit on the lighter side today because our poultry and egg market reporters are at the annual NPFDA and IPI convention in Atlanta, Georgia. If you're down there, I'm sure they'd love to see you and say hello. Today, we're going to look at a varied view of proteins, starting with Fabian on an update on the egg product situation. Good afternoon to you, Fabian. Hi, Courtney. Uh, well, I hope everything's all right for you guys uh, in the in the US. Um, so in Europe this month, the market is uh, slightly down uh, after the full season brought in firm prices on all categories. The activity of the industry and food service is now slowing. The season trend is observed every year as many factories reduce production or close after Christmas. This is also uh, the months where historically the price of eggs for breaking starts declining with lower demand and more supply. However, this year the scenario is more uncertain with strong inflation and HPAI spreading. So as you can see on this chart, looking at all the data since uh, 1999, the cost of shell eggs for breaking has been around 0.4 euro higher than the historical maximum. Um, and when looking at the same time in the year. Uh, this is due to severe bird flu in the EU and elevated production costs, namely the price of feed for laying hens. When getting closer to uh, the holiday season, prices stabilize at around 2.35 euro per kilo, and now we can notice a very small decline um, here in 2023. In terms of demand, um, Whole egg is the most traded uh, of the liquid categories. Its value strongly progressed last year with the increase of the cost of raw material. The supply of eggs for breaking was extremely limited with a reduced production of eggs and increased demand in September after the summer holiday. Here you, you can see it. We went from 1.88 euro per kilo all the way up to 2.85 euro per kilo. But the demand is now tempered due to a lower activity of the food sector and values lost eight euro cents in two weeks. Following whole egg, we've got here yolk. Yolk has also been uh, an important item during the year end as very used in patisserie and sauces. Despite the slight decline, prices are still above five euro on average in the EU as the demand is currently active to moderate. We observe similar trends on whole egg powder and yolk powder, but prices increase more strongly in March with the short supply of eggs for breaking, which led to supply chain disruptions for dried egg items. With heavy energy bills to produce powder and little competition from the US, these items see no price drop this month. Regarding liquid egg white, um, the trend looks different with a regular progression and peak of value here we are at 1.87 euro per kilo in October and constant pressure since then. The white market, the white market is uh, weaker because sometimes albumin is produced regardless of the demand. The yolk market is firm, so it compensates the overall value of the egg separation. In addition, egg white is used to dry and produce egg white powder, which demand is slightly dropping. As you can see here, um, this has already translated into softer prices this month for egg white powder after values nearly quadrupled since uh, 2021. Here we were at around um, 5 euro, 5.5 here, and we went all the way up here to um, 20 euro per kilo. So the situation for egg products is a bit less tight in the EU so far this year in 2023. The main risk for the moment is the same as in the US, it's bird flu. So far this year, the, the disease is more limited on laying hands, but in regions where bird flu is very spread on other poultry species, the transport of animals and eggs is limited and pullets cannot be brought, brought to the farms. So the EU market is still in a very much... Um, uh, under tight scrutiny um, and for any problem on the on the supply side. Thanks, Courtney. Thank you very much for that update, Fabian. There is a lot of factors to consider. And like you mentioned, bird flu remains top of the list. And I'm sure you, along with the crew, will continue to keep us updated with the latest updates on that end. 
We are now going to switch gears to the red meat side, and Todd has an update on the rib market. Hey, good morning, Courtney. Yeah, so we're going to give a brief update on what's going on in the rib complex, as that has been front and center since just about November, and it's still top of mind and the bulk of conversations right now. So as we pull up our numbers, let's just go into our bone-in or export rib for right now. And as you can see, um, since we've gotten into this year, we have just seen straight declines. Um, you know, we rallied the entire month of December, which was pretty contra-seasonal in a historical uh, view. So if we take a wider view here, or a longer view, I should say. We've really extended this rally way beyond um, what the market was anticipating. You know, last year we had quite the opposite where there was a little bit of panic back in the summer and everybody was utilizing suspended fresh or flash freezing programs to get their ribs on hand for the month of December. This year there was a, you know, a discrepancy in approaches. Um, this year there was quite a few more guys that were willing to play their hand in the spot market once December rolled around. Um, and as we can see, you know, that strategy didn't really pan out all too well as we saw some of the, uh, highest levels on record for the month of December this year. And if we go into the cutout to give you a real, uh, the bulk of the picture, um, you know, the rib cutout, it was at a historical level for the month of December. Um, you know, 21 versus 22 was nearly 25% higher than you know what we saw in 2021 as the high point and that's you know this is an all-time view um we continue to make new record highs for various months um you know just highlighting the fact that you know seasonality and historicals um you know they're not indicative of future returns <laughs> and i think that's been highlighted um rather seriously these last couple of years um you know coming into january we were like i said 26 percent higher than our last uh you know highest level on record so right now um it seems that the market is correcting lower in the immediate term um you know focus has shifted back over towards the loin as a value play and we'll have to see um you know how how much of a correction is left in the rib market before uh buyers feel apt to step back in thanks a lot for that update todd Seems like the saying holds true, what comes up must come down. And it will be interesting to see where that trend's going forward. Uh, now moving away from land animals, Josh has an update on the salmon market. Hello, Josh. Hi, Courtney. Good morning. Happy Tuesday, everybody. Um, yeah, there's a couple uh, big stories happening right now uh, in salmon. Um, the first of which is the lack of whole fish available in the market, or at least over the last two weeks. Um, West Coast Canada, uh, a large producer and supplier of uh, whole fish into the market um, is actually little to no, has little to no fish coming uh, out of that origin currently, uh, primarily due to Discovery Island uh, closures, where normally that uh, fish that's produced in Discovery Island would be coming out around this time of year. Um, what that's done is the entire whole fish market uh, is uh, tightened or constricted on supply, and it's uh, providing upward pricing pressure uh, across the complex. If we take a look at the farm salmon index, uh, we can see right here uh, in 2023, we're seeing a very similar increase that we did last year uh, in 2021, uh, which a couple market participants uh, were saying we, we could see in Q1 and Q2, uh, similar levels as last year. Um, that lack of whole fish coming from the West Coast is the driving force in that right now. If we go over and take a look real quick at whole fish out of uh, northeastern Canada, uh, we can see the skyrocketing price here. Um, you know, for for Q1, uh, that directly correlates uh, to the lack of whole fish coming uh, coming out of the west coast uh, Canada. An interesting tidbit uh, with all of this, though, um, has been Norway. Uh, Norway's been following the same trend as everyone else uh, with. 
uh, pricing on whole fish uh, moving higher over the past few weeks. However, we just uh, most recently started to collect a few lower offers out of Norway. Uh, speculation being that with uh, China temporarily closed down for Chinese New Year, uh, there's more product readily available into the United States um, as that product's not going into China, um, as well as concern over the Norwegian tax, uh, less contracts um, being you know, done in advance uh, due to the Norwegian uh, tax and uncertainty there, um, which brings us to the tax uh, while it is in place uh, and technically has started, uh, Norway does not seem to know exactly what the percentage is, how it's going to be recorded or when it's going to be collected. Uh, so most recently uh, last week when we were at NFI's GSMC conference, I believe the salmon panel uh, spoke to Norwegian salmon uh, as chaotic. So we'll keep a close eye on that and uh, see from there. Thanks, Courtney. Thanks very much for that update, Josh. Appreciate your insight. And chaotic is certainly one word that stands out. Well, we did take a wide stance on many different proteins this time around. One common theme seems to be that the past few years have seen record levels due to a wide array of circumstances, and it certainly makes for interesting times here in the market reporting world. This has been Erna Berry's Tuesday Morning Market Roundup. Thank you to all of our participants and thank you to our viewers for joining us today and we look forward to seeing you next week.